there's another one uh, that's pretty well understood, tectonic compaction. So in this, uh, you could imagine that you had some sealed reservoir. So here's your, here's your reservoir and there's some overburden above it. And then something that happens relatively quickly on the scale of geologic time is you could have faulting that occurs such that it separates your seal reservoirs into two sealed reservoirs. Right? So that could happen relatively quickly due to um, er faulting, right? <laughs> big earthquakes essentially. Uh, then you continue after that, you know, so you have this sort of sudden instantaneous event that causes the compartmentalization or de you know, two, one reservoir to become two, and they're both sealed from one another. And then you continue to have tectonic motion, right? This is volcanic activity and other things, right? So you continue to have tectonic motion, and then that itself will continue to put driving stresses on the plates. And that can, you know, if you're squeezing, if you're squeezing the reservoir, you're squeezing the pores in the reservoir, and that can cause the pressure to go up. So that's tectonic compaction. Uh, other reasons for overpressurization is just hydrocarbon column heights. So the fact that you know your hydrocarbons are more buoyant than water, and you know specifically you have, if you have a lot of gas in the reservoir, there's a very buoyant gas at the top of the reservoir, and that would be at a higher pressure than the water. Right? And this is also evidenced in real wells. You can see it. Um, you know, so here, uh, this is also some uh, data from the. This is also data from the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, so here's your hydrostatic sort of line. And then you can see at the tops, right? So this is depth on, on this axis. At the tops of the reservoir, you see these kicks. So areas that increase at a rate faster than hydrostatic. Right? And so these are overpressure regions at the tops of the reservoir due to just due to the presence of the hydrocarbons at the top. By the way, uh, I, I'd like to tr try to mention sort of where we are in the book if you want to read along. Uh, but if I forget to do that, you can always sort of tell. I think I don't. Th not every figure I show is from the book. Uh, there are some other ones, but a, a lot of them are from the book. And so you can always just look at the figure numbers, right? And so they always start with the chapter number. So. You know, this is figure 211, it's in, it's in chapter 2. So we're in chapter 2 right now, and uh, if you want to read along, and there's some additional information about these things, uh, additional reading in the book if you'd like. Excuse me. So another and you know I don't know if overpressure is the right word for this because what what happens here in the central what's called centroid effect is if you have some uh, sand formation some highly permeable sand formation not necessarily sand but you say highly permeable so that the, the uh, pore pressure increases in that region hydrostatically right. If it's in a completely sealed shell uh, layer and tilted in some way, well, the, the the pressure in the in the shale will increase at approximately lithostatic, right? approximately close to the vertical stress, um, 
but in the sand where it's well connected, then you'll have uh, an area of pore pressure that increases hydrostatically, right? And the area, the point where, where they meet each other is called the centroid, so this, this point at the center. Right? And anything above the centroid will be in a state of overpressure with respect to the surrounding material, right? So this, this sand, I mean, it, it's just increasing at hydrostatic, right? So normally the definition of overpressure is greater than hydrostatic, right? Well, the pressure in the sand is still increasing hydrostatically, right? But with respect to the, it's overpressure with respect to what's next to it, right? Because this is increasing lithostatically, and then you have this region that's increasing hydrostatically. So we're sort of um, tweaking our definition of the word overpressure in this case. I don't really like that. But nevertheless, these are very important because if you're drilling, you know, if you're drilling along in this shale, what's going to happen when you hit that sand? You're going to get a kick, right? So it's important to, you know, in that case, it is an overpressure scenario or, or from the perspective of the drilling. Because you're drilling into something that's much higher pressure than what you were in. So in the centroid effect, remember it's it's you know overpressure. It doesn't necessarily mean higher than hydrostatic. It just means higher than what's around it. So there are other mechanisms. These are sort of second order effects. So you could have temperature increase due to radioactive decay. Um, just you know, radioactive decay uh, that's ongoing everywhere in the earth. Uh, that, that can in increase the, the temperature a little bit. And you can also have upward heat flow from the mantle, right? But that, these are very slow processes. Diffusion, you know, heat diffusion is a very slow process. And so uh, if, if this occurs, it's, it's, it's secondary to the other things we've talked about, right? And then you can also have Hydrocarbon, you know, hydrocarbon generation can cause if you already have a completely sealed, um, if you already have a completely sealed reservoir, and there's still active thermal maturation going on, right? It's creating new hydrocarbons. Then that's going to you're, you know, you're basically putting new fluid into a sealed reservoir. Then that's going to cause the pressure to go up. This is also typically, you know, secondary to the other things that we talked about. 